There's increasing confidence that storm number one will impact the Great Lakes and much of the eastern half of the U.S. from February the 7th through the 10th, followed by a second stronger storm system that could bring more rainfall and strong winds for much of the east with flood concerns also. Now, before I do get started, if you are new to the YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. And most importantly, if you haven't already, please take the YouTube channel survey. This is for my YouTube channel because I want you all to tell me on how my YouTube channel is doing, if I should improve something for the production, and also to improve other things around my YouTube channel. So if you haven't done it already, there's a link in the description below this video leading to my YouTube channel survey. So without further ado, my name is David Schlothauer, and let's get started talking about these two weather systems that are going to be impacting much of the eastern half of the nation through the next 5 to 10 days. So here's a look at the GFS global computer model for Tuesday, February 7th, 2023 at 4 in the morning. So again, this is tomorrow morning and we can see with what the map actually shows. We got areas of low pressure, especially over northern Michigan. That is a cold front and this is a stationary front. We got a low pressure system, uh, a thermal low that has developed across southern Texas or will develop by tonight and there's other high pressures. Also a cool thing of this graph that I have here is my confidence meter that I made. So hopefully this helps you out a lot so that way you can see if the forecast is confident or not. 10 being most confident, one being lowest confidence. Okay, so hopefully um, that I didn't confuse you there at all. So let's go forward into Wednesday morning, February the 8th at 4 in the morning, and we can see there is our system developing across much of eastern Texas, central and southeastern Oklahoma, southern Missouri, and Arkansas, part of a trough of low pressure that is draped across eastern Texas. You got that stationary front, you got that cold front um, that moves across pretty much the upper Midwest into the Northeast. Confidence of this is fairly high, so we're very likely to see a pretty impressive system here developing with some moderate to heavy rainfall and some thunderstorms. By the time we go into Wednesday afternoon here, yes, 4 p.m. on Wednesday on the GFS model, we can see there's your low pressure, cold front and warm front, pretty dynamic here with an 8.8 .8 on the confidence meter. So we have very high confidence that the system is going to develop and it's going to be moving into the Great Lakes by Thursday morning, February the 9th here. If you're headed out early in the morning, if you're uh, traveling anywhere, if you're doing any uh, morning commuting to your work or anything, please be aware we're going to see some moderate to heavy rainfall, maybe some severe weather the further south you go because we got that cold front that is going to be racing on through, but strong winds. Take note of the ISO bars there on the screen, an indication that we have a lot, uh, a big pressure difference between the high pressure over here across the northern Rockies and the low pressure over the, um, the Great Lakes. And so this yields a 8 on the confidence meter. So we have a high chance or a high likelihood here that there is going to be a pretty strong system. Uh, it doesn't have to be snow. We do see some snow here over Iowa, but it's going to be how much wind and how much energy there is going to be associated with this system. So going forward here by Thursday afternoon, February the 9th, we can see there's a surface low moving over Michigan, moving into the northeast. So, uh, that frontal boundary is draped across Georgia and the Carolinas, bringing some showers with a confidence level of a 7.8. So lesser confidence. But of course, when we go further out in time, the confidence is going to drop off naturally. We don't expect it to be up to a 9 or a 10. And then by um, Friday, February the 10th at 4 in the morning, we got a second system. So the first system moves out. We have a second system that moves on through across Georgia, the Carolinas, into Alabama and Mississippi. So again, 4 in the morning on your Friday um, this is local time, by the way, so you want to add two or three hours. So we're going to say six to seven in the morning for your Friday and Saturday or Friday, I should say. That's where your system is going to be developing. All right. Confidence is decreasing by this time by 
uh, about 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, February the 10th, 2023. We can see there is your surface low. A lot of moisture associated with this, maybe some flooding, and that's that system that's going to be rolling through. This is not the second system. We have another one after this later down the road. So by Saturday, February the 11th at 4 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a medium confidence that this system develops, all right? So please take that, uh, please take note of that, all right? There's a medium confidence that I have issued um, because there is a lot of uncertainty here. We're not seeing that this is going to be exactly how it's going to be. There's a lot of disagreement still. So that's why I put a six on the confidence meter for this system. All right, that's day five, day six-ish, five and a half, day six. By day seven, by Sunday, there's your low pressure. Skies clear out. We got a stationary boundary that is um, kind of going to be in place. We got a surface low that's going to try to develop again over Texas, and that's going to be the second system that we're monitoring. But take note here, we have a low confidence that this is going to be developing. This is literally... You're asking for seven and a half to eight days out. And so we don't expect that this is going to be 100% confidence. There's a lot of uncertainty. So take note of that on the top right side of the screen where it's pointed to a four. Then we are down to a three on the confidence meter by the time we go into Tuesday morning, the 14th of February, which means this is pretty low confidence and then very low confidence by the time we go into day eight and day nine, when we go into Wednesday, February the 15th at four in the morning with some showers and thunderstorms that are a slight possibility. All right, the European model, also comparing the models that I like to do here, you can see uh, without the um, kind of the anal or anographics that I have here, so we're just going to use a blank map and we can see showers and thunderstorms start popping off here by four, uh, by about seven in the morning, Pacific Standard Time, February the 8th. This continues through 7 a.m. on February the 9th, so that is Thursday. We're dealing with a pretty intense system. A confidence level on this is up to a 9, and that moves through. And that's, I'm going to only show you the first system as far as um, this goes. But a lot of barrel clinic is sent here. We have a lot of cold air that is going to be moving in in the wake of that system, and that's going to really um, um, bring down temperatures quite a bit. Snowfall totals here. Oops, my graph is covering it. I do apologize. I will fix that in the next video. Um, for northern Wisconsin, for northern Michigan, uh, anywhere between maybe 5 to 10 inches of snowfall. If you are in southeastern Michigan, between 3 to 8 inches of snow. So this yields a medium to high confidence on the European model as far as snowfall totals go in the next five days. Okay, uh, this is through February the 11th. Uh, 2023 at about 4 in the morning, not 4 p.m. By 4 in the morning on February the 11th, uh, oh wait, no, this is the GFS model. Sorry, folks, I forgot to change this. I will fix that in the next video. I had a rush uh, to get this out to you all um, before it got too late, so that's why there is some little mistakes, but don't worry, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. All right, so the GFS model February the 11th here has a medium confidence, even lower than the European model, which had a 6.5. This has a 5. So just because we see a lot of snow here doesn't mean it's going to happen. You can see why I have a 5 there. There's a lot of disagreement between the two models that we have here. Now, taking a look at our 250 millibar wind chart on tropical tidbits, and we can see we definitely got a strong jet stream that is um, over the region, and that's why we are going to see that system really develop in a hurry. And yeah, look at the trough there approaching the northern plains by the time we go into Thursday into Friday. Pretty energetic system here, and look at that foxtail flow here over the eastern half of the U.S. into the uh, northeast. That is because we have a lot of upper-level winds. We're going to see some dynamics come in hand with that system, and then we get a break, and then this little guy comes through off the New Mexico plateau by the time we go into the middle of next week. This system definitely has our attention. 
Um, we'll keep an eye again on exactly how this is going to all evolve, but a pretty strong trough that is going to be developing, and then maybe another one, a very, very hyperactive pattern really setting up possibly through the 15th and the 16th of February. Now, before I do end it, folks, do not go anywhere. Please watch the entire video here towards the very end because I have an, a very important announcement to share with you. Again, as I did at the beginning of the video, please take the YouTube channel survey. This really helps out on what I what you want me to do better for the YouTube channel to improve things, um, to also ch um, change my upload times if necessary. So please take the survey. The more responses we get, folks, um, if we can get up to a thousand plus responses or answers, that would really help out because, again, it does take a lot of careful decisioning making here as far as I'm um, changing something that you really want me to do. So please make sure you do the survey. There's a link in the description below this video. You all did really well. I We had like 30 new responses come in yesterday. So let's get this. Let's get this out to a lot of people because again, the more people um, do this survey, it really helps out a lot. All right. So thank you all for that. Also, if you haven't yet, please consider checking out the Mesovort WX weather website. There's a link in the description below this video leading to that site. It's 100% free to join and become a member today. It is really, really honoring if you all can check that out. It's a lot of fun. We do um, updates, weather stuff in there. It's a lot of fun. You can check out our home feed, our About Us page, and other stuff. This website is hosted by Evan James WX. Be sure to also um, check him out on Discord. Um, you can, um, there will be a link in the description to the website and to the Discord server where you could also communicate with him. Very good website, folks. I highly recommend participating in it today. Then lastly, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel right now, please consider subscribing to me. It really helps out a lot. The more subscribers we get, we can get this out to a lot more people, more weather updates, more critical information that we need to give you. So if you haven't subscribed right now, please consider doing so, hitting the like button and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. And also, if you wanna become a member today, there's a, also, you can find that on the channel by clicking on the join button. It is not free in this pair. Uh, I'll give you special updates and much more information. The more members we get, um, I will be hosting special live streams and other cool stuff for the YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out, folks. But until next time, I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more updates on the weather.